the Speaker of the House of Assembly in St. Vincent parts ways with the ruling party and will also quit his post in Parliament. Our top story in Caribbean Newsline for Tuesday, October 29th. From the CMC News Centre in Bridgetown, I'm Don Paris. Good evening. Speaker of the House Jomo Thomas announced Tuesday that he has resigned as a member of St. Vincent and the Grenadines governing Unity Labour Party, ULP, and will also step down as Speaker early next year. Thomas, who was the ULP's candidate for South Leeward in 2015, also said he has no intention of offering himself as a candidate in the next general elections. He said he tendered his resignation as a member of the ULP earlier on Tuesday, but he did not want to disclose to the public the reasons he had given the party for doing so. The announcement of his intended resignation as Speaker came about 19 days after Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzalez told him in Parliament that if he had something in his craw, he should speak it. Gonzalez's comments came after Thomas had reprimanded him for abusing the rules shortly after the Speaker had issued a similarly stern rebuke to an opposition lawmaker. Prime Minister Gonzalez said on Monday that the general elections would be held by the end of 2020 ahead of the March 2021 constitutional deadline. Thomas said he has come to his decision primarily because the time, the energy, the money, the effort cannot be properly justified considering the current state of play in the party. To allow for the ease of transition and to allow for a sense of clarity to prevail, particularly among the long-suffering long people, long-suffering and neglected people of South Leeward, I formally removed myself as caretaker for the constituency so that others may desire to represent can move forward. I think that these decisions are important because they allow me to do a number of things. One, they allow me to free myself up from any strictures I may have to say and do what I want to do as the year 2020 rolled in. Since the 2015 polls, Thomas, who is a lawyer and his law firm, have won a number of prominent lawsuits against the government, in which the court ruled that the Gonzales administration had violated citizens' rights. Thomas says he still has a contribution to make to Vincentian development and Vincentian reality, and he wants not to be hampered or hindered in any way as he goes forward. Over in St. Lucia, the Speaker of the House of Assembly, Andy Daniel, has been summoned to appear before the court in an action filed by constitutional lawyer Martinez Francois regarding the non-appointment of a deputy speaker. Daniel confirmed on Tuesday that he is to appear in court on Thursday. He said he was personally served by Francois on Sunday at his residence. St. Lucia's Parliament has been without a deputy speaker ever since the position became vacant in 2016, and Francois is contending that Parliament should have, by now, appointed a replacement. Dominica's Prime Minister Roosevelt Skerritt says a friendly government has agreed to fully finance the construction of an international airport in the north of the island, but he has kept Dominicans guessing as to which country would be financing the multi-million dollar project, telling them he'd say more in his independence address on November 3rd. Skerritt made the announcement on Monday night as he revealed plans for more than 100 new housing units in Roseau Central. He said while people were skeptical after he said the country would have an international airport, that is closer to becoming reality. The good Lord is on our side in Dominica. And it is written, it says, seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. And we have been seeking and we've been knocking the doors and the good Lord has granted us that entry into the house. So listen to my Independence Day address and you will, you will, I will tell you about the complete 100% financing of our international airport in Dominica. And as a matter of fact, that government has sent a delegation a special envoy sent by that government to see me today to, to, to deliver that special message to me that they will finance the airport based on the request 
of this government. And, and you know, I told them, let me tell you something. I want that airport to start in 2020, you know. And they have also sent a delegation to Dominica that will remain there for the next three to four months to put all of the systems in place for the international airport. Earlier in the day, Scarrett signed a multi-million dollar economic and technical cooperation grant agreement with China. He also met with the, the Director General of the Latin American Division of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, saying afterwards they would be visiting the northeast of the island on Tuesday, where the government is proposing to construct the international airport. Well, earlier this year, Scarrett informed Dominicans he had received firm proposals from a number of countries, including China and India for the construction of the airport. Political leader of the progressive Democratic Patriots, PDP, Watson Duke, is making another call for Tobago to be granted autonomy from the mainland Trinidad. And he says if his party wins the Tobago West and East seats in the 2020 elections, the island will realize self-governance within six months. The PDP leader, who formally launched his election campaign on Sunday, is the party's candidate for the Tobago East seat. We get more in this TTT News report. The Progressive Democratic Patriots PDP are ready to rumble. The party addressed its supporters from a boxing ring at the Magdalena Grand Hotel and Beach Resort on Sunday. A sign that they are ready to fight for the Tobago East and West seats in the general election and the 12 seats in the Tobago House of Assembly elections in 2021. Political leader of the PDP, Watson Duke, said his main goal for Tobago is self-governance. Next year will be 40 years since we are crying out for this self-government, self-government, self-government. So what self-government means? It means that we would have the right to determine for ourselves the things that matter to us. But I've spoken to all of them, and they're not willing to give it. None of them. He urged supporters to give the party the two seats to make this years old dream a reality. We don't want Trinidad. Judicial system, we don't want that. We must have our own judicial system here. We must have our high court right here. Our immigration officers must come from right here. We don't want to share no immigration control with Trinidad and Tobago. We don't want no air traffic control with Trinidad. We must control everything. Minority counselor in the THA, Dr. Faith B. Israel, shared the same sentiments as Mr. Duke. We want to have an opportunity to take this island to a place where when you are looking at your 10-year-old child now, looking at your 18-year-old child, looking at your 30-year-old brother and sister, we want to create an island where all of them could stay right here. They could stay right here and study because we have the University of Tobago. The party launched its campaign under the theme People Before Politics. Well, staying in Trinidad and Tobago, the Movement for Social Justice, MSJ, is calling for wider support for the legalization of marijuana for medical purposes at the very least. Political leader David Abdullah told a press conference on Monday that it was time for the Twin Island Republic to get with it. His comments came against the background of MSJ activist Daniel George walking symbolically from his home in Point Fortin to San Fernando to highlight the need for the country to have available medical marijuana which could treat his children who suffer from a number of illnesses. A year ago, Abdullah initiated a process at the University of the West Indies where he'd convened discussions across faculties. There was to be a group that would lead research on the issue, but nothing has come of that. And Abdullah said he's again trying to get a major academic conference going on the issue. We're trying to stimulate a cross-faculty and multidisciplinary approach by academics at university from faculties of medical sciences, from law, from natural sciences, and so on, agriculture, from um, the, the area of economics, to come together to, 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 to provide the scientific and technical and other support for the legalization, um, if, well, for us, legalization, and at minimum, 
the decriminalization of marijuana. Still to come, the official death toll from Hurricane Dorian in the Bahamas nears 70. The details of that story and more after the break. Stay with us. To the region across the sea, to the islands also green, we connect you to all the Caribbean. Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday. Gun violence, especially mass shootings, are an ongoing threat in our society. What have we learned from these events which can help us prevent further crises of this nature? Well, sadly, each one of these events is a major learning opportunity. And what we've learned is we need to look way beyond the traditional warning signs. We've actually begun to identify warning behaviors that tell us when someone's on the pathway to a mass shooting event. As a small business owner, you have to make sure your technology is available and operational at all times. But what happens when your network crashes, your email goes down, or your user systems get a virus? You may try to fix the issue yourself, but you can end up making the problem a lot worse. At Digital Networking Solutions, we're more than just people who try to fix your computers. We monitor, maintain, and support your IT systems so that you can focus on growing your business to its fullest potential. When you sign up for one of our IT support plans, we get familiar with your IT environments beforehand, so we can manage it proactively as if it were our own. Your business deserves the best IT services available to ensure it functions to its maximum efficiency. So give us a try today. Email or call us, and we will give you a free network assessment to determine whether now is the time for your small business to adopt digital networking solutions for a smoother, more reliable network experience. Welcome back. Two months after Hurricane Dorian swept through the Bahamas, the official death toll has now been put at 67. National Emergency Management Agency Director Captain Stephen Russell made the disclosure at a press conference Monday evening. As he pointed out that as the debris clearance operations continue, there may still be some bodies amid the rubble in Abaco and Grand Bahama, which were hardest hit by the Category 5 hurricane which plowed through the archipelago at the beginning of September, causing millions of dollars in damage. As we hear from Mathley Moxie of Eyewitness News, an update on the recovery efforts was also given at the same press conference where the latest death toll was disclosed. The police on the island of Abaco recovered the remains of two unidentified bodies. One in Dunlestown, Abaco on Monday, the 28th of October, and one in the mud on Thursday, the 24th of October this year. This brings the total number of deceased persons recovered since the passing of Hurricane Dorian to 67. Captain Russell also revealed tonight that the hurricane's missing persons list has now been decommissioned. The missing persons desk has been deactivated. All inquiries should be made at the criminal detective unit in the Providence and in Grand Bahama. And at the Abaco Police Station located in the government, the government complex and And while there remain 777 evacuees still living in shelters in New Providence, Reconstruction Committee member John Michael Clark also revealing that the Marsh Harbor International Airport can see its first international flight since the storm as early as next week. We originally had this week targeted to open the Marsh Harbor Airport. That is highly unlikely. We're going to see if we can get it done within the next 10 days. But apart from securing the perimeter, we'd have to check with civil aviation to see what other protocols they have to yes. um, abide, by. abide by in order for the aerodrome to be open for use. And when it comes to getting back in the groove of conducting business, Disaster Preparedness Minister Iram Lewis says the banking industry will see its way clear very soon. We plans are on the way right now for the Royal Bank um, to move into the, the government compound area. And um, Commonwealth Bank, the local bank, and yes, the Bahamian Bank, we are very proud to say that they are, they are pretty much up and running. Um, so Royal well, Bank, ro ro well, they, they are making effort now to have their, their, their ATM machine, and, and they will have um, their infrastructure in place to allow commercial banking services, 
I'm in short order. The Ghana government says it's considering extending legal aid services across the country in an effort to reduce overcrowding in prisons. Attorney General Basil Williams says too many people are incarcerated for petty offenses because of a lack of legal representation. He said the initiative is significant to government's plan of action for alternative sentencing. In the other cases where you have restorative justice approaches, that could be done. And um, one of the components of, of, of the program, the support for the criminal justice system of the IDB, is to ensure that um, they provide legal aid. So we're looking at this whole question of legal aid, not only for the city, but um, for the hinterland now that you have these magisterial districts uh, open up. Haiti's President Juvenal Moise has asked the United States to provide humanitarian aid for his country. Appearing on a radio and television program on Monday, Moise, who has been under pressure from opposition parties to step down amid corruption allegations, gave no details of the aid request made to Washington. But on Sunday, the United States said in a statement that the apparent lack of urgency to resolve the extended political stalemate in Haiti is increasingly worrisome, as is the growing negative impact on public security, the economy, and the delivery of humanitarian assistance, including food aid. At least 20 people have been killed and several others wounded since opposition parties have been staging street demonstrations in support of their calls for Moise to resign. On Monday, Moise restated his position regarding the formation of a government of national unity and invited the opposition, which has blanked his request in the past, to be part of the initiative. Ahead in Newsline Sport, Haley Matthews now eligible for selection for the third ODI against India. The details when we return. The CSME. What's in it for me? You are invited to a public town hall session on the CARICOM single market and economy, featuring the Prime Minister of Barbados, the Honorable Mia Motley, the CARICOM Secretary General, Ambassador Erwin LaRocque, along with other panelists, at the Walcott Warner Theatre in the Errol Barrow Center for Creative Imagination on the UWI Cavill campus from 6 to 8 p.m. on Monday, 4th November 2019. A public town hall on the CSME, broadcast live throughout the region via the Caribbean Media Corporation and UVTV. A production of the CARICOM Secretariat in collaboration with the Caribbean Development Bank, the Government of Barbados, the University of the West Indies and UVTV. And we bowl off the sports segment with cricket. And Cricket West Indies CWI on Tuesday announced that Haley Matthews will be eligible for selection from the third One Day International against India. This follows her withdrawal from the previous series against Australia due to a breach of CWI's code of conduct. The matter was referred to a six-member disciplinary committee, which was headed by Independent Chairman Justice Winston Anderson. And the committee has ruled that Matthews should be suspended for eight international matches, which will end after the second ODI of the upcoming India series, which begins in Antigua this weekend. Meanwhile, CWI also confirmed that star all-rounder Deandra Dottin is continuing 
continuing her active rehabilitation from shoulder surgery that has kept her out of cricket since May. She started a gradual return to playing plan under the guidance of the CWI medical team. Meanwhile, Shawnisha Hector is the first female cricketer from Antigua and Barbuda to be selected to the Wendy's women's squad. The pace bowler is among the 14 ladies who were chosen to face India in the first two ODIs at Sir Vivian Richards Stadium on November 1st and 3rd. Also among those women is medium pacer Aliyah Alin. The Barbadian, who is also a talented footballer, has been playing cricket for the past seven years. And she says she's looking forward to the experience and will be giving her all. Um, playing uh, among a couple of West Indies players help a lot, like getting the um, ball um, challenging, um, getting feedback, a lot of experienced players asking for um, advice and what so or what not to do and like training ways help me a lot and I especially train with them, set, set the standard higher. Um, I'm just happy to be a part of the team, um, be, just be amongst the girls, um, I forget the opportunity, give them my best. Trinidad and Tobago Red Force are looking to rebuild their confidence ahead of the upcoming regional Super 50 tournament. Red Force will play in Group B with last year's losing finalists Ghana Jaguars, along with recent winners Windward Islands Volcanoes, a composite West Indies Emerging Players squad, and the United States. They finished second in their group last year, but were defeated by champions combined campuses and colleges Marooners in the semifinals at Kensington Oval in Barbados. Their head coach, Mervyn Dillon, says they're looking to put that performance behind them. I think when you look at the last few years, Trinidad hasn't, been, hasn't done really well in the tournament. Um, um, coming in as coach, I think I, I pointed out a few reasons why that might have been uh, our fitness levels, our feeling. Um, there are two things that, 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 that stand out to me. Um, again, with the amount of time that you have with the team between the CPL and this tournament, there's not much time. Um, whereas years gone by, you would have had you know, a few months with the players. It's very limited time because most players would seek you for coaching for the year because of the different tournaments. Um, so that also impedes in terms of me trying to get as much progress as possible with the guys because you have them for a very short time. But my expectations, the guys are quite keen. And, and I think it's, it's the most important thing for me to try and create the right environment. Um, where there is trust and understanding um, as a coach. I think that is very important. So that is that is my expectation, is to kind of get the guys together. And I think once that happens, uh, you will see with the talent that we have in our team. Group B matches will be played at the Queen's Park Oval and the Brian Lara Cricket Academy. Discarded West Indies opener Kiran Powell and the region's latest test recruit Rakeem Cornwall will headline Leeward Islands Hurricanes 14-man squad for the regional Super 50, which starts next week. The left-handed Powell has played 40 tests and 46 one-day internationals, but he was dropped after West Indies' tour of Bangladesh last December. He will be joined by off-spinner all-rounder Cornwall, who has been named in the side despite his call-up to the West Indies squad for the one-off test against Afghanistan in India starting November 27th. Cornwall topped the batting averages and the bowling aggregates in the last Super 50, and he will be available for several matches before heading off on senior team duty. Hurricanes will contest Group A at home at Warner Park and Connery Sports Complex alongside combined campuses and colleges Marooners, Jamaica Scorpions, Barbados Pride and Canada. The tournaments run from this November 6th to December 1st with Group B being staged in Trinidad at Queen's Park Oval and the Brian Lara Stadium. Hurricanes raise the curtain on the tournament when they take on Marooners at Warner's Park. The squad is Jamar Hamilton captain, Rakeem Cornwall, Kiran Powell, Devon Thomas, Montin Hodge, Casey Carter, Yannick Leonard, Kezron Archibald, Shino Berridge, Jeremiah Louis, Akeem Saunders, Terence Ward, Amir Jangu, and Jason Campbell. Trinidad and Tobago girls under 14 team handed Suriname a 3-0 defeat in their latest match in the CFU Development Challenge Series. It was the second victory for the Trinis after they scored a 10-0 victory against Grenada. We get more in this report from TTT News. Once again, the TNT ladies started on the front foot and took the game to the Surinamese early. It would pay off as they opened the scoring when the darling of that 10 to nothing thrashing of Grenada, Brianna Smith, who started this time, took a chance well to open the scoring. The visitors offered little by way of offense, and everything was dealt with adequately by the defense and the keeper, Michaela Learwood. As TNT led at the break by a single goal. Just as in the first, 
TNT fired the first salvo in the second half, and then they would again benefit from some shambolic defending, and there was Talia Martin to capitalize and make it two to nothing to TNT. Martin wasn't done as she knifed away into the area only to be tripped as she tried to go past the last defender, leaving the referee no choice but to award a penalty. Jamie Waldron stepped up and made no mistake as TNT led three goals to nothing. And that would be the final score in this one as TNT remained perfect with two wins from as many matches. And finally, Jamaica's horse racing fraternity is mourning the loss of the 2016 St. Ledger and Super Stakes winner, Big Daddy Cool. As we hear in this report from TVJ Sport, the horse died after finishing a workout at Caymanas Park on Monday morning. In a statement to TVJ Sports, trainer Anthony Baba Nunes said Big Daddy Cool died of a suspected heart attack after collapsing on the bridle path in front of the winner's enclosure on his way back to the stables from galloping five furlongs with stablemate Tuna Siliata. He captured the Viceroy Trophy on June 30, his second time out this season, winning by five lengths ahead of stablemate Houdini's Magic, Super Luminal, and reigning Horse of the Year will in charge. His other win came in the 56th running of the Prime Minister's stakes on August 10, once again getting the better of Super Luminal by six and a half lengths going 10 furlongs. One of the better two-turn horses at Caymanas Park, Big Daddy Cool managed to defeat Shiza Manita for the first time last December in the Miracle Man Cup, helping his owner Stephen Narain Singh to a second owner's championship after aiding in the first title in 2016. The 26th the Sport will be right back. After an emergency, you can help yourself and others by looking, listening, and linking. Looking because you want to see if the person has some signs that is in distressing. Looking for the symptoms, how best you can support the person. And then listening, because listening is very important. Listening with your ears, listening with your eyes. If you do that well, then you'll be able to link them to the appropriate resources. Be ready, look, listen, and link. The CSME. What's in it for me? You are invited to a public town hall session on the CARICOM single market and economy, featuring the Prime Minister of Barbados, the Honorable Mia Motley, the CARICOM Secretary General, Ambassador Erwin LaRocque, along with other panelists, at the Walcott Warner Theatre in the Errol Barrow Center for Creative Imagination on the UWI Cavill campus from 6 to 8 p.m. on Monday, 4th November, 2019. A public town hall on the CSME, broadcast live throughout the region via the Caribbean Media Corporation and UETV, a production of the CARICOM Secretariat in collaboration with the Caribbean Development Bank, the Government of Barbados, the University of the West Indies and UETV. Again, the major developments of this day, the Speaker of the House of Assembly in St. Vincent and the Grenadines parts ways with the ruling party and will also quit his post in Parliament. And in sport, Haley Matthews now eligible for selection to the West Indies women's squad for the third ODI against India. And that's Caribbean Newsline. For news and sport around the clock, subscribe to carnanews.com. And for more of our programming, log on to carvision.tv and check out our YouTube channel. We'll be back here again tomorrow, but from all of us at CMC News, thank you for watching and have yourselves a good night.